Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and I'm here today with my friend Matt Shower from Illinois and he's going to teach us about bagging quarries for our Tuesday tip. I mentioned in my uh, peek into the 75 gallon crib tank that I have a bit of a hoarding problem. So Matt has graciously decided to take some of my oddball singlet quarries that are around. Well, the first thing we do is we catch the quarries, and there's a method we refer to as kick the bucket. Quarries have the ability to release a toxin into the water, and you want to, whatever, this happens whenever they're startled. So you want to startle the fish, change the water, the water you can see here, maybe, that it's starting to cloud up a little bit from the release of toxins. So you want to catch your quarries a good period before you think about bagging them up. Kick the bucket occasionally, startle them so they release these toxins. Now I know I've noticed that most obviously in like the stare by quarries and the ones with the orange pectorals. Do you find it in all species? I've found it in several of them, even been surprised in some cases. I don't know if there's any truth to this, but I've also found if you've been feeding heavy with live foods, hmm. it seems to be much more toxic. So if I plan on transporting a group of especially adult quarries, I'll shut off blackworms and daphnia several weeks before I think about transporting them because there's been instances where I bagged fish up and in two hours they were toast and I could, the only thing I could link it back to is I'd recently been feeding live food. That's interesting. Now do you generally individually bag them or will you bag them in groups? For shipping I individually bag so that if something would happen, if one of them would start to release toxins, it's just going to damage the one fish and the rest of your shipment will be fine. So I'll usually use like a three inch or a four inch tube style bag. I'll bag each one individually and then I'll slide all those tubes into a larger bag. You want to make sure to double bag because quarries have quite sharp spines on the pectoral and the dorsal fin. Which is also why when we were catching these, Matt actually hand caught them all rather than using a net uh, to preserve those spines and prevent damage to the fish. So yeah. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll start with the CW006. Now what we have over here is just a bucket of fresh, clean water and sort of a neutral temperature. Now do you add any special chemicals or additives to the water when you ship? For long term shipments I use Prime or Amquil uh, just to try to neutralize any of the fish waste. Um, you use poly. Yes I do. Uh, in Europe you see a lot they will put uh, carbon. Right. In the bottom of the quarry bags to help absorb some of the toxins and some of the fish waste. Yeah, I like the poly filter because it adsorbs and absorbs, so it doesn't need uh, an oxygen exchange to really work. But it's expensive, so it's not ideal. So because I'm flying, I'm, you know, I'm going with a little bigger bag just to save time and space and give these guys plenty of extra room. Now both Matt and I prefer to knot our bags rather than using rubber bands. Um, it's, it's a personal preference. I just have never had a bag come untied, but I've had plenty of rubber bands break in transit. Another thing you want to be careful with is uh, quarries, you don't want to pack with oxygen. Quarries have a, the ability to gulp air and pure oxygen can burn their gills. So what we do is you want just enough water to cover your fish, when it, specifically when the bag is laying on its side, the dorsal fin will be just peeking out of the water and you want the rest of it air so there's plenty of oxygen within the bag. They don't need a whole lot of water. In the wild, for during the dry season, quarries actually get trapped in, in little ponds about this depth, slightly deeper. So they can handle, you know, minimal water, even with the water quality starting to go, as long as they can get at oxygen. And that's important with any fish when you're bagging them. You really want to do like one-third water to two-thirds air. Keeping them wet is enough. If they have nothing to breathe, they're out of luck. Again, mentioning the spines, you want to handle this with care. Discourage the fish from getting into the corners because they'll get in there and they'll stick their pectoral fins out and pull coals in the corners. I've been sprayed by many a, many a pop bag from quarries. So. Yeah, that's right. And then with quarries specifically, you want to go end to end so that when you tie your bag you have no corner for that fish to get into. This is especially important with the smaller species. I mean, I generally only ship the Corydoras hebrosus and pygmaeus, the dwarf species, 
And those guys will get stuck in every corner. So you want the bag nice and firm, but not too terribly tight that it's prone to popping. So you, can, you should be able to squeeze it like that. Now you ship a lot of quarries, don't you, Matt? Yes, I do. Primarily juveniles, which are a little more forgiving in your packing process. Right. And your website is NBM Aquatics? NBMAquatics.com. All my stuff I offer is tank rays that focus almost exclusively on the quarries and plecos. Make sure you check it out. So Matt's hand catching another quarry to bag for us, and he's going to tell us again about the importance of uh, how much air to water. So when your bag is tied, you want just enough water to cover the fish. You can see his, the tip of the dorsal is sticking out a little bit there. You know, we could probably go a little more so that if it does get tipped funny, it doesn't end up stuck. But, you know, oxygen is the most important part. They can handle some de degradation in the water quality as long as they can breathe. We're going to keep working here because Matt has a flight to catch. Make sure you stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com, for my current stock list, upcoming speaking engagements, and information on all things nano. Don't forget to stop by and subscribe for Tuesday tips and Sunday species spotlights.